Everyone knows that a great pitch starts with an incredible slide deck. I think if you're going to reinvent torture, just like do PowerPoint presentation slides all day and keep somebody awake. All right, fine. We don't need a great slide deck per se, but you need a good story. Nobody cares what any startup does. Maybe their mom, but that's where the line is drawn. Okay, fine. I guess I don't really know what I'm talking about, according to him, but, but he does. And there are so many more experts that we've gathered here for you today to tell you exactly what you need to know to craft the best possible pitch for your business. So first, let's lay some ground rules. Your pitch is going to look very different, whether you're pitching in front of investors, someone in the hallway or in front of a pitch competition judging panel. But what you need to know is that some of the strategies you're going to use can overlap. So it's important to know all of them to give the best possible pitch. So first, let's start with who you're talking to. There are so many people you're going to pitch your business to that you need to know who they are, what they want from you and what they need to hear to give you their business. But is it venture capitalists? Is it pitch competition judges? What even is the difference? Let's bring in some of the experts. So you've got pitching to people who have no friggin' clue about how venture capital works and you've got pitching to people who understand exactly how the game works. Well, venture capitalists want to see, they want to see a path to profitability or understanding your customer. The reality is this, this is a very specific game and the game is not about building a great company if you're talking about venture capital. The game is about raising money. When you're in a pitch competition, you need to capture the attentions of your judges that are out there. You need to show them the energy and your passion for your business. You're going to be showing your knowledge of the business maybe a little bit more deeper than you would in something where you're pitching to VCs and it's just kind of numbers and the metrics behind the business. You're going to show why you're the right person for them to be investing in and awarding that prize package too. If your audience is somebody who's pretty dumb in your space and they don't know an awful lot, then you want to speak to those people about like how you're going to build your company. If somebody's in the venture capital space and they really know it, then you're going to speak to them about how you're going to raise money. So let's dig deeper into the ideologies of these two. The following are a few examples of what people are looking for in your pitch competition. I think the best way to make your business stand out above others in a pitch competition is first and foremost, be yourself. Find ways to make it fun and interactive. Tell a story. Maybe it's a personal story, something you've experienced. We love stories, humans. We love hearing stories. We love storytelling. The biggest thing is the passion from the founders. So now that that's taken care of, let's focus on the venture capitalist. It's going to give you some tough love. Nobody cares what any startup does. The only thing they care about is what they're doing in relationship to how it helps the investor. The only way we make money is if you continually multiply the revenue that you're receiving on a consistent basis. And hey, presto, investor number one here receives a huge multiple on what I invested. So what are we looking at here? The biggest difference is that pitch competitions are fueled by passion, storytelling, presentation. For venture capitalists though, they only care about numbers. So once you know what kind of people you're pitching to, you need to learn about them as individuals. It's time to do some stalking. When it comes to knowing your audience, if you can get access to who the judges are and then look them up, look at their LinkedIn pages. There are sometimes connections you can make and you can even throw them into your pitch if, if it makes sense, you don't wanna force it. You can even use some of the language from their site. And for example, I looked at their mission statement and I incorporated that into my answer as well. That's part of knowing your audience, knowing who the judges are because it helps you stand out. So Brittany hits it perfectly. Find out what businesses they're from incorporate the ideologies, mission statements, etc. Just like applying for jobs. The more it's tailored to the business, the better. For pitch competitions, there's one very important extra step, the judging criteria. Here's the best part. This is literally a cheat sheet on exactly what to do. I cannot understate the importance of studying the judging criteria. Go to the terms and conditions, the eligibility requirements, because they hide really good nuggets in there. What are they looking for in your pitch? Sometimes they'll even give you math with it. They'll give you percentages. They'll say 30% for your business plan, your plans for growth, 40% for the originality of your idea. Are you disrupting your industry? Most pitch competitions are gonna give you a set of components that you need to make sure you hit on. 
just go in order and hit those. Make sure you really truly understand that and you address every single one of them because the judges are going along and they're going to start, they're checking boxes in some regard. They're paying attention to what you're doing, but they're also making sure that you understand these are the things that they're looking for and these are the proper components to the pitch competition and, and understanding your business. Since Criteria tells you the structure of what to do, we're going to come right back to it once we talk about the meat, the essence of your pitch. Deep breath. Now, it's finally time to talk about the pitch itself. Thanks for hanging in there. Whether it's a competition, a VC pitch, or a talk over coffee, all of this starts with an incredible elevator pitch. The purpose of an elevator pitch is to quickly get people's attention and help them understand what it is you're trying to sell. The core things that should be in an elevator pitch are your brand story, what your product or service is, and why people should care. An elevator pitch is a great way to start your introduction in any pitch competition. You should start an elevator pitch by hooking the listener into something really compelling about your business and the problem it's solving. You wanna make sure people understand your idea, what it is and what it stands for. So that's where we introduce ourselves and say, we are the first and only monthly subscription box, blah, 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 blah. An elevator pitch can be used as the focal point for your entire brand and really hones in the messaging that you use on social media when you're selling your product and email, on your product design and everything in between. An elevator pitch's time is gonna vary depending on the context of the situation. A pitch competition might be a little bit longer. If you're truly riding in an elevator with somebody, you need a very concise statement. If we're looking at an elevator pitch for judges, you should be having more fun with it. Have a hook, tell a story, introduce a problem and tell how your business is a solution. Make it interactive, but most of all, keep it concise. I know that's a lot. The following is an example of a great elevator pitch from the Sub Summit pitch competition. I don't read, miss. I'm black. I said that statement to you because one of my ninth grade students said it to me and it planted a seed. Representation and access are not just buzzwords. Representation and access are two of the biggest contributors to the literacy gap that affect our loved ones every day. Hi, my name is Nia Taylor Clark, founder of Black Lit. I'm also an educator, mother, and a reader, so I have the pleasure of solving this literacy problem from multiple perspectives. What our community needs is more representation, more access, and more motivation to build lifelong literacy leaders and world changers. That's where Black Lit comes in. Black Lit is a monthly subscription box that highlights Black authors and entrepreneurs in efforts to close the literacy gap, increase representation, and encourage meaningful dialogue across racial divides. Did you notice how Nia Taylor Clark starts off with a shocking quote and statistic that leads perfectly into the problem she's attempting to solve for? She then introduces herself, her position, and what her qualifications are. And she rounds it out by introducing exactly what her business intends to do to solve the problem with children literacy. To give you some context, at the time of her pitch, Nia Taylor Clark had just a thousand followers on Instagram with her business, I Am Black Lit. She now has over 15,000 followers on Instagram. Great story. Now we know a good amount about pitch competition. Let's focus on VC pitching. A great elevator pitch is when a startup can show the investor exactly how they are going to get a return on their money within 15 to 30 seconds. So you saw an amazing example of a pitch competition elevator pitch? Now let's do the same thing, but for venture capitalists. Here's Brian. Our venture fund specialized in the very earliest stage where the maximum returns can come by, and we do it globally. So it's given us the opportunity to increase the valuations on our company and the money that we could pay back to our other limited partners by over 700%. And that's only in the first two years. That's actually outperforms the market by about four times. The biggest thing with Brian's pitch is that it's all about what he can do directly for the venture capitalist. It displays his numbers and compares it to the competition, showing why he and his business stand out. All right, let's dive deeper into the pitch. Whether it's a venture capitalist pitching or pitching to judges, there's one common goal here. Make your business stand out. Brian is an investor who hears pitches every single day and he told us exactly what he's looking for when sitting in a room with pitchers. So we have invested in over 220 companies. Whenever I'm meeting with companies, I'm looking for five key indicators. Number one, I'm looking to see, do I have a person who can execute? Like the execution is in the history that they bring into the conversation on things that they have actually done before. The second thing that I'm looking for is, does the entrepreneur 
have a product whereby I have some type of customer proof. The next point that we want to see is, do we have a market size that can show that the company can actually be sold for a decent amount of money? Second and final thing is the team. You want to be able to see that it's skill gapped in a way that other people can execute in the areas that they need to execute for. And then finally, we want to be able to see what is the relationship with this entrepreneur and money? You want to be investing in the people who understand money as a tool. Now, let's shift back to the pitch competition. Remember the judging criteria during the pitch competition that serves literally as a cheat sheet for you to follow? We're going to base it off of our own pitch competition at Sub Summit. And I know the criteria may vary, but it's a great representation of the structure you'll be building out for your pitch during a pitch competition. With the Sub Summit pitch competition, we have five key areas that we tell our pitch competitors to make sure they get through. And those are what the judges have in front of them as well. The first one is a business model and idea. That's the elevator pitch that we talked about earlier, that you want to make sure people understand your idea, what it is and what it stands for. Second is your customer validation. Have you surveyed people? Have you started selling products out there already? How are you doing with that? And how are your customers responding to it? The third area is the execution and design. Have you built it already? How much of it has been built out? What does it look and feel like? How far have you gotten in that process already? The fourth is the sales and marketing strategy. If you started selling, how are you doing so far with it? What's your customer acquisition cost? What do your sales numbers look like? What's your marketing strategy going forward? Is it gonna work now as it is? Is it gonna to need to be changed going forward into the future? The fifth and final component is the team. Is it just you? Do you have some consultants and advisors? Do you have friends and family helping you on it? Do you have other people that you plan to bring in and hire once you get going? This gives everybody a full idea, the judges, people watching the pitch competition of where your business is from start to finish when you hit on those five key areas. And I think it's not important just for the Sub Summit pitch competition, but for any pitch competition. So that's the criteria we wanna cover. There are great insights from our friend Brittany who literally broke down her pitch step-by-step step just for you. The main structure for my pitch is number one, starting off with the really dramatic statistic. And then also introducing myself. You want to be able to help the judges understand why you're qualified to run this business. The next piece is discussing the problem. What really are we solving for? We're kind of like the light at the end of the tunnel and then we explode into, and this is, and that's where Black Girl Magic comes in and then we do our elevator pitch. Then we go into our business model. So how does this work? People want to know, you know, how did, how is it set up? How are you making your money? We talk about some of the numbers, some of the traction we've gotten over the last three years. Increase in subscribers month over month, growth in terms of revenue or profit. And then we go into, okay, we've, we've had all this great success, but we still need your help and here's why. And that's where you go into talking about what you're going to do with the funds and your investment will help us do X, Y, and Z. Boom, boom, boom. And then we tie it up, wrap it up in a nice little bow and give them an ending that gets them excited about us and what we shared. Just kind of taking them through a journey. It's all a story. It's all about storytelling. We love stories. So turning that pitch into a story has worked really well for us. So Brittany brings something very important here. You need to be telling the judges exactly how you'll be using the money to improve your business. Don't forget about that step. So you showed the judges and everyone else how your business stands out with your story. But good numbers will be the ones that make the difference. Whether a uh, startup or the company or the business is pre-rev or post-rev, you kind of look for, for different things. If they are pre-revenue, you really want to understand that they are really, really validated. It. And what, what does that proof of concept look like? Talking about maybe things that you've worked through and discovered about your subscription, you know, what your potential customer acquisition cost might be, what your unit economics look like, the value you're providing and what you're doing. And then for businesses that have been around looking at revenue, looking at margins, acquisition costs, uh, lifetime value, month over month growth, and how economy of scale is going to come to play as, as, as a business grows. The other thing to look at is maybe you've done surveying of people out there that are going to be your potential customers using that survey data to present that out there as well of people who we plan to sell this to see this value based on these data points that we've collected so far 
and presenting as much of that as possible to your pitch competition judges. Anytime the numbers are in your favor and you have really great numbers, definitely call that out. Being able to incorporate the metrics to tell the story of what those metrics mean, like what kind, what does that mean in terms of everyday success for the customer or what type of impact is that having on the customer, that's really a great way to weave in the metrics because it's showing, it's a number, but it's also attaching a story to that number and showing the value of the product and how that number is helping drive that value. If you own a subscription specifically, there are a few more metrics you can bring up in the conversation, like your churn rate, lifetime value, or even your customer acquisition costs. Speaking of subscriptions and pitching, if you're a subscription business and are ready to exercise your newly acquired skills from this video, then you need to apply and be a part of the SubSummit pitch competition. This is your chance to pitch in front of a panel of judges and a live audience in order to elevate your subscription business to the next level. We're talking about thousands of dollars in cash and prizes. And if your business hasn't adopted a subscription model yet, we recommend looking into it ASAP. Everybody should be in retail and everybody should figure out how to do subscription. Are there businesses out there that you see think should be thinking about subscription? All like of them. Now, you know what you need to talk about during your pitch competition, but how are you gonna do that exactly? It's time to talk about the aesthetics of your pitch. Now, this is specifically for pitch competition. Let's talk slide decks because sometimes they're required. Presentations and decks need to be complementary to you. You are the main centerpiece of what's happening there. You're the focal point of the pitch competition. Use pictures, not words. And if you have to use words, only use a few. There's a piece of software out there called Haiku Deck and it would help you build powerful presentations because it would limit you in the number of lines and words, similar to a haiku, very simple in, in nature. What the rule is, it should have really no more than like five bullet points in there. And out of those bullet points, just a couple of words, big, bold text, powerful imagery, really make the judges not focus on what's on the screen there, focus on you and the words that you're saying. The deck is more of a reference, it's more of like a supplement, but the core is you. And if you have to read it, it's going to cause issues because we're going to sense you're not prepared. And if you're not prepared, it's probably because you're not passionate or obsessive enough about what you're doing to make yourself successful. It's kind of like your guiding star, your, your north star, your guiding light to help you get through the story. And you're not looking at it, you're not looking at the pitch deck. All right, the pitch deck is in the back. It's just guiding you along. You're talking to the audience. But what do venture capitalists think about slides? Like, they're just so boring. They're so boring. People are so terrified of communicating one-on-one -on -one with someone that they have this crutch with so much information in a slide deck about all this stuff, which, man, you should be talking about. Come on. Like, tell me. Tell me what you're going to do. One person to another person. You got, like, three minutes. Like, explain it. If you want to have some nice pictures there, cool. Like, put them up. If you want to have a couple of numbers on a slide deck, like, no worries. Put it up. Like, God bless you. But, like, don't confuse me being polite with me being interested. With that said, let's talk a little bit about something you should never do in your presentation. One of the worst things you can do is put a chart up that shows a hockey stick growth curve. And we joke about it in pitch competition world a lot of times because everybody, everybody wants hockey stick growth. And really that's not the reality. That's not what's going to happen. Yet everybody does plans. They're all lies. Because they start from the place that, that entrepreneurs believe that the investors want them to go to. Here's our revenue of $2 million a month. Here's in year five how it's going to hit it. And it's not based on reality. So when you can show either real data that shows your growth, maybe it's been doing this, that's real, that's tangible. And that's not some made up numbers that you think are going to happen. You're showing real database decisions. I want to know like what you have done on marketing to show me that you're protecting the money that we're going to put into your company. I don't want to see a pretty piece of paper that you've had somebody make up for you and put into a nice Excel spreadsheet so you can put down and show me a happy, beautiful life in the future. No matter who you're pitching to, you're going to get questions. And it could be a formal Q&A or just follow-ups in general. This can be the toughest thing to prepare for because you're not going to know exactly what they're going to ask and you still need to be ready. If you want some prep, here's some great questions that most judges ask during the Q&A section. 
So like most of the time I'm digging into the team, I'm digging into the execution of the entrepreneur, I'm digging into like how they're going to get that first hundred grand a month in revenue. I'm digging into like how are we going to keep those subscriptions in place and what their retention looks like. I'm looking at the size of the market that can get them to like two, three million dollars a month in revenue. How are they prospecting? What's their process? How are their people? How proven is the product according to the client? The most common questions you may hear from pitch competition judges, what challenges have you endured or what challenges do you foresee coming down the pipeline? Can you at least speak intelligently to how you are gonna address any challenges? So the judges are really good at sniffing out BS. And so oftentimes if they see something in your pitch that doesn't quite make sense, Questions will arise from that. The other area I see judges ask a lot of questions around is when you don't hit on one of the bullet points that they're looking for in there. There's usually questions about uh, around the team. Things that tend to be overlooked are things around price uh, and, and cost and the economics of the business that comes with scale and, and, and things like that. Proof of concept as well. Uh, or like market validation, especially for pre-revenue businesses. So I think those would be probably the biggest thing is proof concept market validation, team related and traction. Now, judges and venture capitalists all know that not every product is perfect right off the bat. Every single one has its kinks when you first get started. And understanding that goes a long way with potential investors or judges. It's all right to be upfront about the risk you've identified and the data you've started gathering. With this knowledge, you can provide rebuttals and plans to take actions in the future. You want to embrace the truth, you want to embrace the challenges, and you want to embrace the opportunity. Everybody knows that the early stage of entrepreneurship is a beast of a carry. It's a beast of a load. And the only way that you're going to be able to do it and be successful at it is if you embrace the challenges that you're facing and you like punch them in the face every day. Look, there's, there's going to be questions that are, are tough to answer. Like, yeah, you're right. I don't have any food experience. And this is going to be a challenge, but what I'm doing to address that is by immersing myself in this world and I'm going to get there with it. More the judges can see the real you and the real idea behind what you're doing, the better off you're going to be. Appreciating the feedback and trying to build on it, I think is the best reaction a founder can can, can do. Acknowledge whatever it is, if it's something that's that's not that great in your business you can speak to that and you can be honest maybe something happened in your personal life and you don't necessarily need to tell all your business but you could just give a high level overview being honest but then also just saying hey here's what i'm doing to address that so that's the whole process of pitching you now have a good knowledge of what to do but in order to do this correctly time to practice so my personal tips for practicing are number one to start out with a document. On paper, I'll print out the slide deck and I'll go through and I'll write down bullet points or what are the main takeaways I want the audience or the judges to get. Now I'm reading, but now I'm timing myself. The hardest thing is pitching in that time frame that you have. Every time I've created a pitch for myself, I think this is easy to get done in three minutes. I go out there, practice it. Oh my gosh, it's five minutes long. Practicing over and over again is going to make you figure out, okay, what's important here and what's not important? And how do I get it to meet the requirements of the pitch competition? Now that I've gotten, you know, the, the language down, I feel good about what I'm gonna say on each slide. I feel good about the transitions. I'll grab my husband or my mom and I ask them for their feedback. How does it sound to you? Does it sound authentic? Does it sound forced? And then I also watch other people pitch. So plug, Subta has all of the Sub Summit pitch competitions on YouTube and you can go on there and watch them and just look at how people pitch. And with that, we've covered all of the keys to pitching your direct-to-consumer business. Let's wrap this up with some final advice. Whoever decides to be part of this, know that regardless of what happens, you are going to be in the same place, worst case scenario that you were at yesterday. You have nothing to lose by being part of this. You need to embrace no, like a well-worn jacket in winter. Like be a warrior, be a beast, like be something of worth because you're asking someone for money. What I always like to share is, Whenever you show up to pitch, bring that passion and that energy, that same passion and energy that you brought when you dreamed up this business. Those nerves channel those into really forces of positivity. If you're nervous, it means you care and that's awesome. 
So that's it. And if you want even more, go to the link in our description to get access to all of our Sub Summit pitch competition events. Study each candidate, study each winner, so that you can craft the most amazing pitch for your direct-to-consumer business. If you like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more subscription tips.